Jesus came. We gotta sing that again. He shall, he shall return. Say it. He shall return. Abba Father. The rose of wine. The blazing sun. The blazing sun shall pierce the sky. Your hands above your head. 
Amen. Give Jesus. Give Jesus. Give Jesus. Give Jesus. Give Jesus. Give Jesus. Thank you. All the praise. Come on, Josh. Holy Ghost boy. Hallelujah. Come on, we can do better than that this morning. Come, let's give Jesus a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Welcome to everyone that is watching online, those that are in, in the presence of God this morning. Such a special day today. It's our Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. So on Friday, we heard a powerful word from Pastor Kev. And in the evening, a few of the young adults and some other uh, people came down and we actually managed to watch Passion of the Christ. And it was, it was tough. It was really tough. Um, we were sitting there, Robin, Jed and I, and we were just literally crying throughout the whole movie because what Jesus had to go through for you and I, it, it just became alive in terms of Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. And the life I now live, I live by faith in Christ, knowing that He loved me and He died for me. So it was tough on Friday knowing what Jesus went through. But there's a song that I've been listening to and Pastor Kevin also loves this song. Friday was good because Sunday is coming. And Sunday is here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on. Sunday is here. So just lift up your hands for a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 I just want to share scripture, um, what God was actually speaking yes, to Lord. me this morning. Matthew 28 verse 2 says, and a great earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven mm. and came and rolled away the stone from the, open, from the opening of the tomb Thank and sat Jesus. on it. The angel's appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 6 says, He is not here, for he has risen. Mm. Just as he said he would, come see the place where he was lying. Um, so that morning the two women came and they, they, they saw the tomb was opened. And this morning God is saying that even though we are celebrating his resurrection, we also need to witness that the tomb is opened. Hallelujah. God is not offended when we investigate on the tomb because that's the power that he had. But verse 5 says, But then the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus. Because when Jesus had died and these men put him in the tomb, the woman didn't have time to prepare Jesus for his burial. So when, when they had come, they saw no one in the tomb. So that's an encouragement for you today. Is investigate on what Jesus has done for you. But most importantly, to know that the same power that rose Jesus from the dead yes. is within you and I. So this morning, even as we praise and worship God, there's no greater time to worship Him because He paid the ultimate price for you and I. Hallelujah. So let's join. Please invite your family and your friends yes. because we're going to get into a powerful time of worship, a powerful time of praise, and we're going to hear a powerful word from God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, hallelujah. Go and greet your brother and sister and say, he has risen. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Put your head together. Say, Hallelujah. Sing. Jesus is alive. Death and love sets victory. And the grave is in the Forever, he's alive. He's alive. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. Death has lost its victory, and the grave has been denied. Jesus is forever. He's alive. The curse of sin is broken. He has found 
preparing myself to go to be there. So I need to be in the house of the Lord. I'm so blessed to see you here this morning. Hallelujah. Don't be sitting at home and, and feeding misery because mom is alive. Our family are alive because Jesus rose. Hallelujah. Now let me see you do something crazy. Lift your hands and say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, you have pain everywhere. You know, you're not worshiping. You're standing like this, painting, painting, painting. Lift that hand up. You know, I fell. Remember I told you I fell in Johannesburg? My hand couldn't, I couldn't that morning, I couldn't lift it up. And by the time I hit the stage, my hand was gone right up. And when I went back, the pain started again. That means I need to. I need to praise the Lord. Yes. Woo! You're getting it this morning? Hey, people are tired to hear misery. Oh, you got this, you got that. They say, mm, and they're running away from you. Today, the more than the conqueror is inside of you. Thank you, Lord. Look at your neighbor. Say, the more than the conqueror oh. he's on the inside. Wake up, man, wake up. Sing it, son. Arise, my soul. Arise, arise. Remember this. Hallelujah. He took my sin. What did he do? And he buried it. No longer I who live. Come on, say. Now Jesus lives in me. For I was dead in sin. But I woke up to see the light. I won't bold, but in the cross yeah. that saved my soul, oh, yeah. all else is lost. There we go, there we go. The grip of fear has no hold on me. Yeah. So where, oh dear, where is your sting? No longer I will live, but Jesus. Now Jesus lives in me. For I was dead in sin, but I woke up to see the light. No, I won't go, but in, but in the crowd. What did it do for that us? That saved my soul. You, All else is love. Hallelujah. There we go. The grip of fear has no hold on me. Come on, look at it and say. So we're all dead. Where is if your you sin? That, no longer I will live Now Jesus lives in me For I was dead in sin But I woke up to see the light Come on, hands above your head like this And smile at Jesus Give him a hundred percent worship Oh, come on, hands up. All of this for you, Lord. Lift up your head. My help comes from the name of the Lord. Oh, Say, all of this for you, Lord. There we go. There we go. Lift it up. I like this. Oh, all of this for you, Lord. Hey, hey. Oh, all of this for you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Hallelujah. all of this for 
alive in you all the words all the injustices all the pain that nobody even can listen even the psychiatrist is just taking your money really doesn't care about you the doctor is taking your money he just is another patient this is just like a number going past him but Jesus said I know every hair on your head I created you, I formed you, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. And I know that you're going to make it. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the power. You may take your seats as we continue to worship. As Josh leads us into overcome. Hallelujah. Come on, with your hands lifted up, close your eyes. Say hallelujah. The darkness fades. It's a new beginning. As we lift our eyes to the hope beyond. All creation waits. 
with an expectation to declare the reign of the Lord our God. We will not be moved when the earth gives way, for the risen one has overcome. There's an empty grave For the risen one is overcome Now the silence breaks In the name of Jesus As the heavens cries and the earth responds All creation shines with the voice of triumph to declare the reign of the Lord our God. Come on, lift your hand and say, We will not be moved when the earth gives way, for the race of one has overcome. And for there's an empty grave for the rich one is overcome. We will not be moved. And we will not be moved. Yes, Lord. When the earth gives way. For the rich one is overcome. And for every fear. There's an empty grave For the rich and one that's overcome Oh, just wave your hand to Jesus And tell him he shall pray He shall reign forever He shall reign forever Stronghold There's an empty grave for the rich and one that's overcome. We will not be moved. We will not be moved when the earth gives way. For the rich and one that's overcome. And for every fear. There's an empty grave for the race and one that's overcome. We will not be moved. Come on, sing it out. When the earth gives way.
Father, we honor your name this morning. Yes, Lord. How marvelous and how powerful. Lord, as we remember and look back at your word that contains the events of this day that we celebrate, how marvelous. Yes, yes Lord, we say these words that you conquered death. But Lord, there's such power in that. And we honor you this morning. We are so grateful for this day as we remember this resurrection day. We glorify your name. Thank you. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you. Amen. Give glory to God this morning. Hallelujah. I'm here to take the offering. I'm here to do the communion. But I want to just go over some, 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 some words we sang this morning. The curse of sin is broken. Come on, friends. <laughs> the death sentence is removed. The grave is denied. Do you know what that means? Do you know what it means the grave is denied? The grave now has no value. It can't hold you there anymore. Not just Jesus, but you too. And when you come to Jesus, the grave cannot hold you because you are gone to be with Jesus. Man, he is alive. The word that echoes to me this morning, Josh, he is not dead. The tomb is empty. The man that died on the cross, the man whose hands were nailed, the man whose feet were nailed, the man whom they scourged and flogged and hit and destroyed his body, killed him, pierced him in his side, blood and water came out, they dropped him down from the cross, he was dead, he was dead, 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 they put him in the tomb. But on the third day, man, come on, come on, who else has done that, who else has done that, but the king of kings, he rose again, he defeated death, he killed death, death has no more effect on me, come on. And all our sins are washed away. Hallelujah. That's my Jesus. Praise his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we do communion first, Pastor? Hallelujah. Let's do communion first. How relevant is this today? If you have not felt, if you've not understood the effect of what we do every Sunday when we come to the table, remember this day. Remember this day. The Bible says in 1 Peter. Sorry, I was going to do offering first. I pulled my scripture out first for offering. But 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 19 says, Whenever the verse starts with a but, I want to go to the previous verse because the but tells you something. So let's go to the previous one. 18 says, For you know that you are not redeemed from your useful, spiritually unproductive way of life, inherited by tradition from your forefathers, with perishable things like silver and gold. It's saying you are not cleansed with perishable things. You are not bought back with perishable things like silver and gold. Verse 19. But you are actually purchased with precious blood. Like that of a sacrificial Lamb, unblemished, spotless, the priceless blood of Jesus Christ. That is what you were bought with. Today I want to take the liberty on this Resurrection Sunday to tell you that this blood was so priceless. Unblemished means not one spot of evil. Unblemished means not one speck of sin. Unblemished, spotless, precious. 
how do we know? What guarantee do we have that his blood was priceless? What guarantee do we have that his blood was spotless? What guarantee do we have that his blood was unblemished? Do you know what the guarantee is? Man, because he rose again. I think I need to explain this, Pastor. I need to explain this. Because if his blood was not spotless, if his blood was not unblemished, he would have remained in the grave. No, you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. If his blood was spotless, and if his blood was perfect to pay the price for your sin and my sin, the Father saw the price and he rose from the dead. If his blood was not perfect enough, if his blood had one spot of sin, if his blood had one speck of blemish, he would remain in the grave to this day. Stand up and give God some praise. That's the Jesus. That's the Jesus. Take your seats. That's, you may take your seats. That's the Jesus. And guess what? That is how he washes you. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. You, di you didn't hear me. I said, that is how he cleanses you. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Spotless. He cleanses you so clean that your heart is able or your, your heart is cleansed enough for him to come and dwell in because if it wasn't clean enough he would not come and dwell in but that's what his blood does go be to Romans and I want to show you what Romans says this morning. Sorry, it always says it, but I'm reading that this morning. Romans chapter 6, from verse 4. It says, we have, oh, see, it says therefore again. I must go back, but I won't go back. We have therefore been buried with him through baptism into his death. We have been buried with him. Through baptism into his death. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead. Through the glory and the power of the Father. We too. We too. We too. Might walk habitually in the newness of life. Abandoning our old ways. For we have become one with him. In other words, permanently united. Listen, in the likeness of his death, we have become one with him. In the likeness of his death, your old man has died. We will, mm, we will also certainly be one with him and share fully in the likeness of his resurrection. You didn't hear me. You and I will share with him in the likeness of his resurrection. So you too are resurrected just like him. I want to go back because you might be thinking of a time in the future. Yes, in a time in the future when the trumpet shall sound, we too shall be resurrected. But, but hold on, this verse I just read now, I'm going to go a further, just like what I read just now. Through the glory and power of the Father, we too might walk habitually in the newness of life, abandoning our old 
It's saying now. It's saying today. It's saying in this life, we walk resurrected in the newness of life, putting the old sinful life behind. Are you with me? That's what we have. How was this possible? Because he said, do this in remembrance of me. Remember what? You and I have died with him. Remember what? You and I have resurrected with him. Remember what? When you eat and drink, his power is within you. His forgiveness is in you. Forgiveness of all our sins. He remembers them no more. A new covenant where we know him intimately. No more shall we ask, who is he? We will know him individually. Do you know him individually? Resurrection. Heroes, you and I live a resurrected life. Because we've become one with him, permanently united with him. He died, my old man died. He's a, he resurrected. I live a resurrected life. And I'm looking for that day when the trumpet will sound and we shall meet them in the clouds of glory. All possible. And therefore he said, do this as often as we like in remembrance of him. Guess why? Lest we forget. Won't you stand this morning? My senior pastor is going to help me. Mfundisi is going to help me. Our pastors will serve you this morning. The Bible says in the night that he was betrayed, he took bread broke it and he said this is my body in the same manner he took the blood he took from the cup and said this is my blood poured out for you that is what you have in your hand hold on to it hold on to it and we all take communion together Understand what you're doing. Understand that when you come to Jesus now on this earth, you live a resurrected life. His power dwells in you. You heard the team say so many times this morning, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Has the team got their emblems? Team? Team Let's serve the team. Hallelujah. So significant, friends. Especially on this resurrection Sunday. Ah, it'll come clear in our minds. I'm eating this bread. And I'm drinking this cup. Because Christ has overcome. Hallelujah. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And we have broke it. an emblem but your faith actually makes this his body <laughs> and as you eat it you won't put anything in your mouth isn't it you'll only put something that you believe in if the doctor gives you a pill for your fever you'll take it because you believe the fever will put you right Jesus says this is my body broken for you for the forgiveness of your sins for your home in heaven do you believe? Yes. Then partake. In the same manner, he took the cup. He said, this is my blood. A new covenant.
you drink this hold on to your empties don't be distracted just hold on to it you can throw it away later in full DC will you pray for us please Thank you, Father, that you raised your son, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, when we picture ourselves, we don't see any of this happening. Mm. But your word declares that he who knew no sin Hallelujah. became sin. Hallelujah. So that through him you might reconcile us you, Jesus. back to you. We are so grateful. That you reconciled us. Yeah. And your word declares that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Hallelujah. All things have passed away. Thank you, Jesus. And new things have come. They came from God the Father in heaven. You have washed us with his blood, purified us with his blood. You have even washed our conscience. We are grateful this morning and father if it was not for the resurrection mm. we won't be standing mm, mm, here mm. we won't be even celebrating mm. the death and the resurrection of your son jesus christ we thank you we thank you master we thank you for the gift of the holy spirit Hallelujah that it's a down payment it's a proof that we are born again mm. born hallelujah. of the spirit of the living hallelujah. God that lives forever hallelujah. so that when you come your word declares that those who are asleep will arise hallelujah. and we who are alive in you we will be caught up thank you Jesus to meet the father take your seats we'll come around to collect your empties I thought I'm done but I'm here to also take up the offering this morning thank you Jesus hallelujah you also want to uh, welcome Neville in the house this morning God bless you Neville you're in the right place. God bless you. You made the right move by coming to church this morning. God bless you. God bless you, Vernon. Friends, very quickly, the offering. You see, in the Old Testament, when they used to take their offerings to the tabernacle, by them taking their offerings to the tabernacle and placing their unblemished lamb on the altar, That was a relationship that they had built with God. And they built their relationship with Almighty God by their constant offerings that they took to the, to the tabernacle. And for as long as they took their offerings, for as long as they worshipped God with, with what they had, their relationship with God existed and God blessed them. God protected them in the wilderness. I had some other things to say, but I quickly want to say this one thing so you can see it. I always wondered what open heaven means. And we use the term so often, an open heaven. I want to say to you today, there's an open heaven on you. I only recently began to understand what open heaven means. And the illustration I want to use, not illustration, the event I want to use this morning is the children of Israel. So long as they obeyed God and brought their offerings to the temple and presented their offerings, they had the blessings of God on them. Question, 
when they were in the wilderness god bless you son when they were in the wilderness did they irrigate the land and plant crops i don't think so because they were on the move so how did they eat what did they eat because they weren't planting crops they weren't planting maize and corn and things what did god provide for them what did god provide come guys you know what or in the wilderness when they were in the wilderness how did they survive god thank you but god provided manna from where okay for how long did god provide manna for for 14600 days how did i get 14600 days 40 years times 365 so for 14600 days they didn't plow the land and grow crops and reap god provided from where and open him provide if we go i won't read leviticus but leviticus will tell you provided you obey god's laws you respect him he also says you reverence his sanctuary the bible says there be an open the bible has the open heaven but the bible says you will have god's blessings on you so if the children of israel for 14,600 days provided he will provide for you and open heaven in levitic it said god's unfailing love and his faithfulness and his provision will continue provided one you don't make any idols you don't erect any images you know was he is god Uh, don't bow down to any stone structure but he says i am your god and then he says keep the sabbath reverence my sanctuary i am the lord so even this morning i believe even as we sow our tide we sow our offering we sow our seed for his sanctuary god has an open heaven on us his blessings continue to flow So even this morning as the baskets will come forward as we reverence God this morning so and as you give remember his blessing is on you amen shall we stand it's an act of worship i want to pray right now and even when you put your offering into the basket don't just throw it in there i say lord i reverence you lord i worship you let's pray Our Father in heaven, thank you for your word. Thank you that your word is packed with your truth. And thank you for your truth this morning. Lord, even in this world that we live in, we may not see it like that, but your word says it. And if your word says it, we believe it. Thank you for your word that says if we obey you, we keep your statutes. We remember you as God, and we remember that you are our God and our Lord. And God in response to that we sow our seeds this morning in response to that we put our offering in the basket or we transfer our offering from my account into the church account lord i uh, the, the seeds that we have for the sanctuary here it is we put it into the basket or we transfer it knowing full well that this makes you proud of your children so thank you this morning and god i pray for all your children who obediently sow this morning who God from what they earn from their possessions as they take and place for your sanctuary i pray the blessings that you promised will flow on them thank you lord for that open heaven upon their lives this morning we thank you in jesus name amen and amen god bless you this morning
if you can say what is done for me is so amazing. Oh, 
what somebody needs to say that one more time and I know he will do for you what he's done for Praise the name. Sorry, you're seeing me again. Uh, uh, Pastor asked me to read. <laughs> uh, Pastor had uh, asked me to read this poem. It's called The Tree of Death. It's written by my cousin Nathan. You know, he, he, he normally writes for every occasion. It's called The Tree of Death. The winding road that was foretold led to the tree of death. Who else could bear? None else would dare. Christ down from heaven sent. Upon the earth, the virgin birth, not then, not now, nor forever, the Father's plan, Christ born a man, to die was his endeavor. The dirty road was ever cold, the way was marred with dread. Love drew him on, the Father's son must do just what he said. He came as but the only man who ever, ever was born in whom no sin or guile was found, whole man and fully God. What terror must have gripped his heart, what anguish in a flood, that the cold sweat that left his brow would fall like clotted blood. But down that road, that winding road, to him the straight and narrow, who else would tread the part of dread to give us brand new Pharaoh. Upon his back he bore that tree, his children on his mind, all the way up Calvary's hill to die for all mankind. They pierced his side, his name reviled, and in the heat of summer's day he cried out loud, Where are you, God? But his father looked away. And as the Savior Christ hung there, how could God seem so frail? He came to die for you, for me. He's calling out your name. And as breath slowly left his lungs, his mission has he kept. It is finished. It is finished. He cried aloud and Christ bowed down in death. They took him down, laid in the ground. But Sunday, sir, was coming. For Christ to rose, I can't compose. My pulse is widely running. He rose to reign with God remain forever in eternity. Now I have hope. Through sick, though sickness chokes, he died for my infirmities. And when in death I'll make my bed, I'll rise straight into his presence. My soul with Christ, who paid my price. My only sweat, my only sweet deliverance. But while we are here, let's talk and share. His life in us wins souls. And to the one that yields his heart, the same joy untold. Remember, look, the price it took. Death, torture for the Christ. And who would bet the tree of death bring eternal life. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Kevin. Thank you, Nathan. Pastor Kevin is the only one who can read it like that. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that Jesus is the first fruits of the resurrection. First fruits, meaning he's the first to be resurrected, not raised from the dead. There's a difference. You, the raising from the dead, you die again. But the resurrection, what, the, the words that I use, one is a verb and one is a noun. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. The noun. This morning, 
Mother Rachel, Mom Rachel would have been sitting there on that chair. I don't know how many have since resurrected into the heavens. But we know that she's there, Petrina. She's there in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank what we all look for and all we wait for and all that we desire, she is there rejoicing and probably looking down today and checking what you're wearing. <laughs> checking if you're smiling, Petrina. Denzel. We thank God. Yes, it was a glorious send-off. The presence of God was there and we continue praying for Petrina and for the rest of their family. It, it is hard when you lose a loved one, isn't it? But we just stay in prayer. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. For those of you joining us online, happy resurrection morning. Maybe for some it's evening, but for Brent and uh, Crispy, they're already having dinner now, or finished dinner. It's so good to see uh, our, one of our sons here. Okay, he's been here already. He's looking behind him. <laughs> Josh and our daughter, Sepapelo, good to see you. Yeah. Sepapelo is always working, so we don't see her, but it's good to have you in the house. And of course, Neville, you're in the right place. Pastor Kevin said it. Amen. It's good to see you too. You're in the right place. This morning, my message is resurrection. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 1, 15 to 23. My attempt is not to read all, but to read a portion of it. Thank you, Lord. How many of you, when you were young and you, sorry, let me change that. How many of you, when you were smaller and you watched that uh, Knight Rider kid? These days, I can ask, my car will start if I, no, I don't have that kind of car, but it has all those features. Can you imagine we were little and didn't know the technology existed? Technology today. In fact, I could come here this morning and not prepare a sermon. I can just go on the internet and say, AI, prepare a sermon on resurrection for me. That's scary. Isn't it? If you're there before me, say amen. We pray for Cecil and the family. They're probably going to be on the way back tomorrow. Think so. They're in Port Elizabeth. Pastor Cecil took the whole weekend to rest from the drive there. <laughs> Preach the word, Pastor John. I'm praying that in the new place there will be a light to you know, just come straight down on the Bible. Then I don't need these glasses. But anyway. I was messing with you because verse 18 says, The eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling, what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of His power towards us who believe. Paul, in verse 15, he said, I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love, and I was so excited. I was so, it was just, he says, uh, some, my one friend just said, he, he was so stoked. He was so excited, but he said, I pray for you. I pray that your understanding will be open. I pray that you get revelation knowledge. I pray that, you will, you, that, that you'll be illuminated in your understanding and your eyes be enlightened to what? Number one, his calling. Number two is inheritance. And number three is power. What power? 
resurrection power. We've got three, but we should get more after this. And what is the exceeding greatness of His power towards us who believe according to the working of His mighty power, which He worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at His right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And He put all things under His feet and gave Him to be the head over all things to the church, which is His body, the fullness of Him who fills all in all, if you can only understand, Resurrection Sunday is not just a beautiful Sunday morning with the scene and the sun rising, but Resurrection Sunday is a reminder of the resurrection power. And Paul was saying, I know that you believe in Jesus, I know that you love the Lord, but I want you to know what you have available that He's called you, His calling, not yours, His calling, His inheritance for you but that you may know about His power. The power that just not raised Him from the grave up to stand on the ground, but the power that raised Him up from the grave to be seated in the heavenly places above all things, above all names, above all powers, above all principalities, and made Him not just somebody, but made Him the head over all things. And if He is the head over all things, that means He is in charge. He is in control. I want to take you back, maybe just <coughs> so we can get to the understanding of what happened. Satan, in his attempt to stop the Christ, to stop the Savior, to stop our Master, from going to the cross, he used every possible means. Remember when Jesus was starting out his ministry, he tried to get Jesus to give up right there and Jesus did not give up. He said, I'll give you all the kingdoms. Just bow down and worship me. Satan was looking for a way to hold you and to hold me in bondage eternally. And as long as he, could, he can hold you in bondage, then he lives. Do you understand that? As long as he can, hold, he can get a hold of you, he lives. But Jesus came and Jesus changed this. So let me take you back. And I want to maybe just talk about a few things that happened. Look at how Satan attempted firstly to use the chosen. Who were the chosen? His disciples. Look at how he used Judas. Through money, he said, to, well, he entered. The Bible says the devil entered. Judas, forgive me, this is just not sitting right. Maybe it's the jacket or the collar, I don't know. If you just help me, it's somehow getting stuck somewhere. So when you, th when you think about this, Judas who is with Jesus, Judas who is Jesus' treasurer, Jesus' accountant, Judas who kept all the money, he used Judas. Judas' is greed. And Judas was willing to betray the master for 30 pieces of silver. Secondly, he used the religious leaders of the day. I'm purposely not saying the names that are there, but I'm saying he uses the religious leaders. Now, I started, he, he, 
He first uses the chosen. He then uses the religious leaders, those who, who have a sense of religiosity to crucify Jesus. They did not know what they were doing. Let me tell you this. If the religious leaders knew what they were doing, they would not have crucified Jesus. But see, Satan is stupid. And the people he used are as stupid as he is. Thirdly, he used the government leaders of the day. And I'm saying government leaders again with intention and purpose. The president of the United States declared today, Resurrection Sunday, to be the day to recognize the visibility of the transgender community. In my head, I'm looking, visibility? What does the word visibility? To see, right? If they can really see, they'll find out. Some of you, when you go home, you'll figure it out. Today, and the, the, the church world, some of the church world is upset. Some of the church world is, they're actually having, drag yourself to church. That's what it's called. Satan will use government leaders. I just use one example. Need I say more about our own nation? Need I say more about other nations? But he used them. Then he used the crowds. See, the crowds, last week we were singing the songs about the coming of the Lord, Hosanna, Palm Sunday. And we had the palms and all of that here. The children were outside. They broke our beautiful palms from the new palm tree that we bought. Forgiven. And waved. The crowds on that Sunday, they were shouting Hosanna. But the next Sunday, they said, or oh, not Sunday, by Friday, they said crucify him. The crowds are generally those who only care about themselves. They only think about themselves. Today, it's for me. The king is coming for me. Tomorrow, he didn't come for me. Gone. Satan will use anybody. At the crucifixion, Satan used the chosen, the religious leaders, the government leaders, and the crowds. But you know, and Pastor Kevin preached this, Pastor Cicero also, also mentioned something. Jesus, nobody killed him. But Jesus, he said, no man takes my life, but I lay it down. But all these were used. And, and Peter, even when he's writing in Acts chapter 2, he said to them, to the religious leaders, and you crucified him. Didn't kill him, but crucified him. The crucifixion has to do with the suffering and everything that goes with that. But I want you to hear this so that you understand the dimension of the miraculous in the resurrection. Let's start with Jesus while he's on the cross. At the cross itself, Pastor Kevin took us and shared with us on Friday about the cross and what Jesus did. But at the same cross, there were some miraculous events that took place. So that you can understand the dimension of his power you heard. Pastor Kevin said, if Jesus wanted to bring himself out of the cross and if he wanted to deal with those who were crucifying him, he could have taken the hammer and just... not What's, what's the guy with the hammer? Thor. Thor. Jesus is no Thor because Thor does not compare to Jesus. 
Jesus could have just said, as they were doing this, he could have just held the hammer and the hammer would have gone into powdered metal. I won't do it. But he did. the Bible says he allowed them to be and do whatever they wanted to do. Matthew 27. We're going to read a few verses. Verse 45 is that first verse, 45 and 46. Jadale's helped me to get some images behind me. I may see them, I may not see them. Now, from the sixth hour, Jesus is on the cross. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour. Now, let me explain. The sixth hour, when you talk in the culture of the day and how they calculated time, the first hour being six o'clock in the morning. So six hours from then would be 12 o'clock, noon, midday. Would you agree with me that is supposed to be the brightest time of the day? From the sixth hour until the third hour, it says... Darkness. There was darkness over the land. And by the way, the darkness was not because some rain clouds came, like you see the description in maybe some of the movies. But a darkness came, and it was not just over the cross, but it was over all of the land. What hour would you consider that? The hour where Jesus is on the cross and the sin of the world or the weight of the world's sin on his shoulders on the cross. Now, he could have been just an ordinary man just hanging there, but the scripture says, darkness filled the earth. All those who were there were wondering and would strange ideas in their head. What is going on? The picture that Jadel is using for me even does not describe the darkness. Because if he did put the one with the real darkness, you won't see the picture. You won't see anything that, that I cannot understand it except like when we think of when those things clouds come and you know there's going to be a thunderstorm and it's all, it just suddenly you have to start putting the lights on inside the house, but imagine you're outside you were in the light you were in the noonday and suddenly it becomes dark and it stays dark for three hours that's that first Miraculous thing, the strange darkness. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cries, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? English rendering sometimes, the language rendering is not as accurate as we'd like it to be. It's not like God had forsaken him. and No, it's not even that case. But just see, can you imagine that picture? Can you go back to that picture, son? Can you imagine that darkness that is there? The cry that is coming. Now, I want you to, I want you to think about this. And I want you to see the miracles that are taking place right here. Jesus has been beaten. Jesus was whipped, he was punched, they pulled, plucked his beard, pulled his hair. Can you imagine that he's now got nails in his hands? He's hanging on the cross. Struck. The cross itself is rugged. The wounds on his back from the whipping is already, the, the, the flesh is open. Every time that you breathe, what's happening? You are 
having to push yourself up. You already got so much a pain from falling and carrying the cross and the beating from one side to the other side. So his body is racked in pain. As a little boy, I was naughty. I got into trouble often. This one time that I got into trouble, the older brother of the sister, this little girl we were playing, I just threw a stone and hit her. Boys do that. You, know, you understand, seven-year-old boys do that. Not you, Kanyezi, but me. I hit this girl with a stone and hope, open a wound or whatever. Her brother, who was some kind of a gangster, he beat me up. He beat me till my face was disfigured. When I say it, it was swollen on every side. I don't know if my sister remembers. He had beaten me so badly that my neighbors had to come rescue me and he tried to hang me as well. I can, for me personally, I can only understand how my body felt from that slapping and the punching, my lips bust. I can only understand that, you know, I'm not really bright skin. <laughs> Blue patches. Jesus. Weak. But the Bible says with a loud voice. How do you get a loud voice when you are on the point of asphyxiation, where your lungs, this, you, you only can speak when you are. But with a loud voice, he's talking to the Father, number one. Miracle. The Bible tells me here, and of course, those who were there, they said, This man is calling on Elijah. Either they didn't understand the language, and they didn't, because Jesus was speaking in the Aramaic tongue. So these souls who yes spoke in Latin or Greek. So for them, this was Greek. Hallelujah. So the strange darkness... The long cry. Now hear this. I want to call it the victory cry in verse 50. It says, and Jesus cried out again. Okay, the first time, maybe he had some, he, maybe he had something on the inside. Maybe he had a little bit of energy on the inside. But this time, it says in verse 50, and Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. What did he cry out, Pastor Kevin? John 19 and verse 30 says, He cried out, It is finished. It is finished. What was finished? See, Jesus hanging on the cross there was the one carrying the sin of the world. Blood poured out so that the blood can be seen and your sins are covered. So all the blood that needed to come out had come out as it were. The scripture says, he said, it is finished. And you know what? Strangest things. I am sitting at my desk this morning and I'm, I'm right on this scripture here and Josh was reading the scripture. I was, I was right at the point of reading this verse well, Matthew 28, sorry. And Josh picks it up and he starts reading this. Simone sends us something on the family group. She took a picture of something that she had. It is finished. The, the Aramaic word is tetele stai. Number one. The payment for your sin. Not I'm finished, but the work I came to do is finished. I want to remind you, Jesus is still alive at this point. And he's making it known. And who is he making it known to? Satan himself. 
Because Satan is requiring the price of your soul. Satan is requiring the price of your sin. Because the, the Father said the soul that sinned will surely die, must surely die. Unless there is a shedding of blood, there will not be a forgiveness of sin. So the blood being shed, Jesus is saying, it is finished. The, the price or the payment for sin paid. The establishment of the new covenant as we were talking about the blood is done. It's finished. The victory over sin and death. It's finished. The fulfillment of the law. Because the law said you live a certain way. But now Jesus came and fulfilled the law for us. It's finished. It's done. The scripture says the reconciliation that needed to take place with, with us and the Father. He said it is finished. Amen. And he had to say it when he was alive. Yes. On the cross. And when he said it, then the scripture says he gave up. He gave up the ghost. He gave up his spirit and died. We were watching something. Generally, they don't die on the cross. They hang there for a long time. It is the high Sabbath. And you know the Romans know the Sabbath. You don't keep people on the cross. You got to get them out. So they come and they check. Is this guy still alive? If he's still alive... They break their legs. And eventually, asphyxiation takes place. In how many minutes? One minute, okay. They came to do that. They did that to the thieves that were on either side. But when they came to Jesus, he was already dead. Miracles. The moment, the moment that Jesus had breathed his last breath, it's something, if you, I know maybe for some of you it's scary, but when people die and they last breath, there's something about that, Pastor Kevin, you, you know. There's something about that. Jesus, can I, I can imagine. Because the, the, the writer who's writing it is describing what he saw. <sighs> At that very moment, read with me verse 52. So that you stay in line with where I'm going. Verse 51, sorry. Then behold... The veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And the earth quaked and the rocks split. At that very moment, I said the religious leaders who crucified Jesus... I can imagine them, Pastor Kevin. They would have been in the temple because it's the Passover. They, they would have, this is now the afternoon. I can imagine they're, they're, now, they're doing what they need to do. And at the moment that Jesus gave up his breath, because even they could not even stand there long enough to look at Jesus because maybe the guilt or whatever, maybe they didn't feel the guilt, but they had to serve in the temple. I can imagine that. Can you understand? In this temple, Herod's temple, the way it was built, according to the scriptures, there was a veil. There were two veils really, the veil from the outside and the veil separating the holy of holies and the holy place. This veil was 30 feet high. This veil, 30 feet, 9 meters high. Some say that it possibly could have been 2 or 3 inches thick, I don't know. But I know that it was very thick to prevent... Anybody seeing from the outside what's on the inside? At this height, at nine meters high, the scripture says the veil tore in two. 
These religious leaders held this, what they practice, as something that is so sacred. And yes, it was, but they, they raised it above the one who made it. They raised it above the one whom they're supposed to worship. But when Jesus gave up that last breath, the veil, let's read it, the veil of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. Some scripture says it was so, th- or not scriptures, traditions say it was so thick. If two horses were tied and they pulled it, it would not have been easy to just tear it. But need to understand, it was not torn from the bottom to the top. It was torn from the top to the bottom. It could only mean something supernatural took place at this point in time. At this very point in time that, you can, that Jesus dies, then the Lord says that there, there is no need for the Separation. The access to the throne room is open. And it tore from the top to the bottom. I can imagine the priest, what are we going to do? We're trying to cover it. You can't cover nothing because it's God who's doing the exposing. Exposing to them what they thought was the, the thing is not. Miracle. I don't know what number I'm on, but the next thing, an earthquake. The the resurrection power has the ability to tear down things. So it says here, and at this, the veil tore from the top to the bottom, and the earthquake quaked, and the rocks split. It was not just the a shake, it was a splitting. The, <laughs> can you imagine the fear? Is it a coincidence? The darkness, the veil? Is it a coincidence, an earthquake? Let's add to this. At that very point, some argue it, some choose not to, but it doesn't matter. Verse 52 says, And the graves were opened. And the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Not resurrected, raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. The second part, I'll leave it for now. But just... At the moment that Jesus dies, the veil, the darkness, the earthquake, the graves are open. Now, where were these bodies? They were in Hades. Hades is a place. It's not hell yet. Hell is not yet. At this point, you need to understand, this, there's a, they die and they go to Hades. Jesus said to the thief on the cross, this day you will be with me in paradise. Hades is divided into two sections. The two sections is one where there's paradise and the other one is where all the good people go and then where the bad people go, the deeper part. And uh, I forget which part of Luke it is, the rich man, Lazarus, and the, uh, and the poor, and the... The rich man and the poor man, Lazarus. And he speaks about a a chasm, a divide between the two places. They can see each other. So when Jesus dies, those who are saints, it says here, the saints, not 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 the evil ones, the nice ones. The saints came out of the graves. What a scary thing that is. Imagine your cousin who passed away. Patrina, what if your mom just suddenly appeared there before you? (laughs) One part is like, you're so glad to see her. The next part is like, their relatives came out of the graves. And so so, so one historian says it, it had to do with the people who died recently. But they came out. There is a testimony of it. It's a, it's a miraculous event. I, I, are you seeing what, what I'm, I'm trying to get to you? The resurrection of Jesus, in the sense, 
has not begun. But I, some say he rose on the third day, right? I believe the moment he died, resurrection power started to come into effect. The, the scripture says he descended into Hades. Okay? Because remember, if he had gone to heaven, when he met Mary, what did he say to her? Don't touch me. I have not ascended to the Father. So did he go to hell because of his sin? No. He went to hell, or to Hades, sorry. He went to Hades to do some work. He didn't go in as weak. And on this day, I can, can you imagine Jesus dying on the cross? The Pharisees and all of those who were there, the, the, the religious and the crowds, the, they were excited because they thought they got rid of this Jesus. Who does he think he is? Now, somebody said, why does, if he's calling out, is he calling to Elijah? Why doesn't he get Elijah to come and take him down from the cross? That's the nature of the mockery. They were saying all this. It was like, we got rid of this man, Jesus can you imagine Satan? Carmen wrote a song. We sang a little bit of it that Ron Canoli wrote as well. I think he wrote that song, right? Satan was celebrating victory. Darkness and fill the earth. Satan was celebrating. That's why they don't get me to sing. Can you, can you imagine Satan with all these demons Seeing Jesus die. They were like so excited having a party. And Jesus is there and looking at each of them. I can imagine they thought they had him. But Jesus was there for a singular purpose. He went to get something from Satan so that you and I can be set free. Amen. This is where the resurrection power comes alive because it was not about you just being healed but it's about taking the weapon that Satan has over your life that you don't need to be in the place of bondage anymore resurrection power means Jesus has the keys let me go to what Josh was reading and I was reading at the same time now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb, and behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. And his countenance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. You need to understand the miracle in this. They said to the Roman leaders that were there, they said, the, the, Jesus always spoke about rising from the dead. The disciples will steal his body and say he rose from the dead. So please put soldiers to guard the tomb. So they sealed the tomb. The tomb had a big stone. I don't know if we can see that. We, we don't have... The, the tomb had a big stone because the tomb was a, a, a hole in the rock, like a cave. There we go. Not you... Mary and the other ladies came. They can't move it. You can't move this by yourself. You need a few people. The Roman soldiers, the centurions, the strongest of the, the, the Roman guard are there. When they say the centurions, we're talking about maybe, some say 600. I'll just, can we just say 100? 100 soldiers guarding a tomb of a dead man. But even they can't keep the Jesus who said, on the third day, I will rise again. The Bible says that the stone rolled, the angel rolled the stone, and Jesus was not in the grave anymore. Jesus was risen 
It's a testimony. And the soldiers that were there had seen it. It says, and the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men because they seen or they had seen the one who was dead is now alive. They became like dead men. Because they were seeing Jesus in his resurrected power. Amen. Jesus in his resurrection came to give you and me the victory. It was more than enough. Or it was not enough just to say it is finished on the cross. But Jesus was also going to release something to you. He was releasing resurrection power to you. Pastor Kevin preached that from Romans 6. That you and I, just as the dead, we die with Him, but we also live. We are resurrected with Him. The resurrection power. We sang it this morning. If the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He will quicken your mortal bodies. If the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Now, I want to close out with revelations. And so that you understand. The, so the Scriptures... Maybe at this point, the disciples have no clue of what happened to Jesus. They don't understand what happened to Jesus. They, even when the ladies came to tell them that the tomb is empty and we, we need to find the master. He's not there. Somebody took his body. They didn't even understand it. Until they met Jesus. And Jesus said to the ladies, go tell them I will meet them in Galilee. Go tell them that we're going to be together. They came and they told the disciples. The disciples refused to believe it because they didn't understand it. I'm sure maybe if some of us were there, we probably would not understand it. See, Paul said, I know that you are saved. I know that you believe in Jesus. I know that you love Jesus. But I, I want you to understand something. I want some things to be clear to you. I want you to know what power you have. I want you to know the kind of calling that He called you unto. I want you to know the inheritance that He has given to you. I want you to know the exceeding greatness of His power. That power that was in that, was, that raised him from the dead and caused him to be seated above everything. All your problems, all your difficulties, and all the ones who gave you the problems too. Revelations 1. It's like the Lord had to wait until a latter time to reveal this to one of his disciples. John, his beloved. John says, on the Lord's day, I was in the Spirit, verse 10, chapter 1. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke to me. And having turned, I saw the seven golden lampstands and one like the Son of Man. He didn't say Son of God. He said, the Son of Man. But I'm in the Spirit. He says, I'm in the Spirit on the Lord's day. This is the, Re the book of Revelation. is the revelation of Jesus. So he heard the voice, but he didn't know who the voice belonged to. When he turned, he saw Jesus. This Jesus who was with him. This Jesus who told them to go preach. So they had a revelation of Jesus. But it was not a complete revelation of Jesus. 
They preached Jesus, but it was not a complete knowledge of Jesus. And I saw in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet, and girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and his hair well were white like wool, his as white as snow, and his eyes like flames of fire. His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters, he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid, I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and who was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, even Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Write these things which you have seen, the things which are in the, th and the things which will take place after this. I am I am the first and the last. The one who is the one who was and the one who is to come. The one who is, that means the one who exists. The one who was is the one who died. And the one who is to come. But most importantly, tell them that I have the keys of Hades. So when he went... He was taking the keys from Satan. I have the keys of Hades and death. Take it back. Verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him. Even they who pierced him and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord. The one, the Lord who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty God. Amen. This resurrection power, this keys, or these keys that He has, now He gives you the keys. That no matter what you, this is what resurrection power is. If the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, now you have authority over Satan. Satan cannot tell you how to live. Satan cannot be in control of your life, your mind, your house, your stuff. You have authority. The Bible says all you have to do is says the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, if He dwells in you. All that has to happen is the Spirit of God needs to dwell in you. You need to receive the Spirit of God. You need to receive that Jesus in order to walk in the resurrection power. I know maybe the earth is not going to quake when you walk. Maybe the sky won't become dark. But I know this. Satan is going to have to step out the way. His demons must scatter when they see you come. Because you have resurrection power on the inside of you. And this is the blessing that we have. That we are experiencing eternity while we are living on the earth in mortality. In this body. And if he gives us the full measure of what he has, we won't, this body can't contain it. 
But what is given to you is enough so that you can stand up and you can declare to Satan over all that is happening in your life, in your house, in your family, in our, in our communities and be the voice because the Bible says, and he caused him to be seated in heavenly places and given him the, the responsibility be, to be the head over all things, over all principality, over all powers. What power is holding you down? What darkness is keeping you in bondage? What situation is holding you captivity? The Bible says, I have the keys. He says, I have the keys. Somebody needs to get the key and lock Satan out and open the doors to what God has in eternity for you while you are living on the earth. The problem is, you need to get the keys. The key to the solution is, get the key. Stand with me this morning. Some things need to be unlocked. Don't fit Jesus into your religious mold. That's what the religious leaders did then. Don't do that. That's, the pro that's where the problems come. That's where bondages come. So when they were trying to fit Jesus into their mold, guess what? They missed the Messiah. To the point they were willing to kill the Messiah. Jesus dismantled the religious foundations and the religious structures. He pulled the curtain down from the top to the bottom and did, didn't just leave the curtain from the top to the bottom. He opened the earth so the curtain can fall in too. So from top to bottom, every structure, he dismantled it. He dismantled the government structures and security. They were guarding his tomb, but he was able to rise. Nobody can hold him in the grave because there's resurrection power. So listen, we are not governed by the, the governmental structures because he dismantled all the governmental. They can do whatever they want to do in their foolishness. That's okay. They're going to pay for it. I'll say it. They went against Israel in a vote. And immediately the backlash in Baltimore, a ship hits a bridge. Sounds so simple. But the amount of damage, maybe there are a few lives that are affected, but the amount of damage, it's called the ripple effect. I read this morning, another boat hit another bridge. And they had to close it. You, you need to understand how God functions. Don't mess with the governmental structures that God has. Don't pay attention. See, governments need to do right in terms of what God is saying. And if they don't, they will get punished for it. It doesn't matter which government it is. Because you and I, who are God's people... And just like He chose Israel, He chose you. We are His children. And if they seek to, stop, to, to steal from you or to draw from you, top to bottom, Jesus dismantled Satan's strategies. Whatever Satan thought he could do using whoever he could, dismantled. Satan, somebody said it, he's a toothless lion, if you want to call him a lion. The scripture says he goes about like a roaring lion. You know what like a roaring lion is? Have you heard the lion roar? Now this is Satan roaring. Rrr! Like but not. He dismantled Satan's strategies. And this morning, I know in my heart, the Lord told me that certain, certain strategies that the enemy brought against you is getting dealt with, is getting dismantled. Finally, he dismantled sin's stronghold. There may be sin all around you, but it won't have a stronghold over you because through his blood, you can overcome. Have you noticed how when you're dealing with demons, just say the blood of Jesus. 
and see what happens. Thank you, Jesus. If the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He will quicken your mortal bodies. Do you have the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead living in you? Do you have the Spirit of God living in you? Have you received this Christ who has given us the keys of sin and death? Who has given us the keys that will deal with Hades? See, at then it was Hades. Now it is hell. Jesus went to dismantle Hades. But if you die now, you're not going to go to Hades. You're going to go to hell. Hades was a place of waiting until Jesus came. And Jesus dismantled and set free. It says he set the captives free. He wants to set you free. If you're home and you're watching, he wants to set you free. You have to receive him as Lord and Savior. That is the key. Say with me, say, Father, I come to you today in the name of Jesus. I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. I repent of my sin. I renounce Satan. I renounce sin. I renounce the world and its systems. I renounce self. And I totally surrender to you, Jesus. Dear Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit that I may live in victory. Walk in power more than a conqueror every day and be a witness for you. I ask this in Jesus' name. That prayer is the most powerful prayer that you can make. It will change your life. It can change the trajectory of your life. In other words, you leave here today, you're, you're not going to be the same. You're going to be different because you're going to be walking in power. We sing that song. We're walking in power. We're walking in the favor of the Lord. You can only do that when you first surrender to Him. Amen? Now let's pray. What is it that has kept you in bondage? See, Satan used all these methods to hinder Jesus and what he wants to do. Satan is still using the same methods. He has not changed. The only thing about Satan is his stupidity. He failed before and he will always fail. The problem with him, he has amnesia. He's got Alzheimer's. He only remembers for the moment. In fact, he can't even remember the moment. Because like, oh, what happened? You have the mind of Christ. And you have to address him with the mind of Christ. And you have to remind Satan, Satan, you are defeated. Jesus has the keys of Hades. He has the keys of death. You have no stronghold over me. Bound in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. If you know you need to be set free of some situation, circumstance, this is that prayer for you. If you're home or you're here, lift your hands and receive by faith. Father, in the name of Jesus, we break every stronghold of Satan. We bind it. We destroy its works now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we apply the blood that was shed, the blood is the declaration that we have the victory. And Lord, we exercise, oh God, the authority that we have. And Lord, as Paul prayed for our understanding to be, uh, Lord, to be illuminated, I pray today that we now understand that resurrection power in us as the ability to dismantle Satan's strategies, to dismantle any structure, anything that comes against us, that you've given us the weapons uh, that are mighty through you to pull down the strongholds, to dismantle every structure that Satan has set up in our lives, in our homes, in the name of Jesus. And as the servant of the Lord, I serve notice on you, Satan, and all of your demons. I rebuke the works that you have exercised 
and the strategies that you put up against God's people. And this morning in this place, in this house, and these airwaves, I declare that Jesus is Lord. I declare that Jesus is the King of Kings. I declare that Jesus has all authority. I declare in the name of Jesus that He is seated far above all principalities and powers and, the, and every rule of the darkness of this age. And I declare that we as believers are seated with Him. Therefore, we exercise the authority over every demonic activity, over our lives, over our families, over our households, in the name of Jesus, over our communities, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you have no authority over us, the believers in Christ. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Come on, begin to thank Him because something's broken. Therefore, sickness must leave. Therefore, even any financial situation must change. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, every social issue, every relationship issue, now dealt with in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you have your victory in the name of Jesus. Because resurrection power is available to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Because when you step out, you're not just stepping out into Easter Monday. <laughs> Easter Monday. What is that? Next week is Monday again. What kind of Monday are you going to have? Oh, that next week is Blue Monday. No, no. You're stepping out because you have resurrection power. Yes. And it increases as you choose to receive it. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated just for a moment. Some quick announcements and then I'll, we let you go for, for the day. Hallelujah. If you're home and you're watching... Send us your prayer request. We're praying for you. God is able to change every circumstance around. It does not need to be the same way. It can be different for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to be fasting from the 1st to the 3rd. That's tomorrow. No Easter eggs. Hallelujah. Miracle hour on Tuesday at 7 p.m. We believe in God for some exciting times. So please come and pray. Friday is Yaya. There's no movie, but they, they are moving. Amen. Amen. Today we are so excited. Jeremy celebrates his birthday. He's not here with us. That's Pastor Kevin. Happy birthday, Jeremy. Val celebrates her birthday on the 4th. Marika celebrates her birthday on the 2nd. And Notile on the 3rd. Yay. Hallelujah. Vernon and Shalane celebrate their wedding anniversary on the 4th of April. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Are we celebrating the victory that God has given to us? Amen. Quick update. This is where we are with regards to our building. God is faithful. Amen. Keep praying because we believe in God and we want to be able to move in fast. I think up to now we already have about 350000 that we've raised. Amen. We still need to reach the 1.7 million that is supposed to be there, but they've given us grace, given us favor. Hallelujah. We're moving forward. And, and you know what? I just, you, you need to do this. Speak to the mountain of money and say, that's all you have to do. When you, when you feel a little bit of, are we going to make it? Just speak to the mountain. Come. So faith in, fear out. Watch, you're part of the miracle. So those who are sowing and those who are sowing, God bless you. Thank you for your seed. God's going to bring breakthroughs in your life. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. I think we're done. I think I am done. For those of you who are joining us online, God bless you. Have a wonderful afternoon. It's Resurrection Sunday. Walk in power. Amen. Amen. Remember, it's all about Jesus. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Praise the Lord. Let's stand together.